Hi friends, this is Marina Chapelsky, New York immigration attorney practicing immigration law for 20 years in all the 50 states. Today's video is the news that we just got the report from USCIS, from the major main, I would say, immigration agency, and also that included reports from NVC about everything that happened with the moving of the cases in 2020 to 2021 fiscal year. Now, if some of you don't know, they, they follow not the calendar year, January to January with U.S. immigration, but they follow the fiscal year, which is from October 1, 2020 to September 30th, 2021. And this is the year that I'm going to be talking about. So that included the last three months of 2020 and 10 months, I'm sorry, that's two months of 2020 and 10 months of 2021. And this is why I didn't become an accountant and I became a lawyer. My math is bad. Anyway, so this report had a lot of shocking, shocking news. And I maybe shouldn't even be shocked anymore having you know, dealing with this system every single day and seeing this with my own eyes. But the numbers, my friends, are staggering, staggering numbers. First of all, I'm going to, you know, address with every, you know, second consultation that our team receives asks, why is my case so delayed? Drum roll, please. Your case is delayed because USCIS now has the numbers and reports officially that their delays now tripled, tripled backlog in the last less than two years. So since COVID started, even the delays that were happening before and everybody was complaining about the delays even before COVID, now those delayed have tripled statistically, officially. God knows what unofficially the real number is, but officially, the delays have tripled in every single USCIS case category, from student visas to marriage cases to, God forbid, if you have the removal of condition case, which is when you have the two-year green card and you're going to the 10-year green card, that waiting time officially is up to 37 months in all the field offices now. So that's the delay situation we're facing now. They also discovered that 230,000 green cards were wasted in 2021 because what, what that means is those visas have expired and can never be gotten back. So people who actually should have gotten their green cards because USCIS was so delayed and so busy were not able to get um, those green cards. So USCIS, because of their inefficiency, work badly. That's what inefficiency means. They weren't effective. They weren't efficient. They failed to issue up to 230,000 green cards. And of those numbers, they had 150,000 for family-based immigrants and 80,000 for people in the employment-based immigrants. So the, those visas had expired and probably those people will never be able to get their green cards again. So this was shocking. 230,000 people, a quarter of a million people should have gotten their green cards and did not last year. Big fail, if you ask me. If this wasn't an agency that gets no taxes from the taxpayers, this is only supported by the fees, the application fees that we, you know, pay them when we file for green cards and naturalization applications and work permits and all that, then they would be held to pay. But since the taxpayers are not giving them money, there's not as much accountability as there should be with this agency. Anyway, also there was a large decline, which means a lot less family-based green cards issued uh, and of those, 122,000 were wasted and didn't get issued. And uh, they're saying that as of 2020, there was 9 million green card applicants stuck in backlog. And now I think it's even more. National Visa Center backlog has gone up by 800%. Okay, so that's really terrible. 
And that's what's happening with those delays. And the reason for those delays is because of COVID. COVID has caused, first of all, they were shut down for part of 2020. Then they reopened very, very slowly. They, you know, basically were bringing people back one at a time. They were spacing out people in waiting areas and so on. Let's see, I'm looking at my statistics that I prepared for today's video. So in 2020, USAS approved 82% of the people who applied, but in 2021, that number went down to 69%, which actually still gives me, you know, a good feeling because a lot more than half is getting approved, almost 70%, which means if you know what you're doing and you have a good attorney, you have a great chance of getting approved to, for whatever you are applying for. The application numbers that they're receiving are growing. So in 2020, a lot less people applied. And I know this because I know our phones were not ringing. People in a pandemic were not looking at the moment to apply for anything new with immigration. 2021 and even now the beginning of 2022 we're seeing a big uptick in phone calls people are finally ready to apply so in 2021 a lot more people applied for green cards and other immigration benefits employment authorizations work permits are still very delayed as well but a lot more people had applied again naturalization approvals came back so that means people who are applying for U.S. citizenship, 19% more people received U.S. citizenship and were approved more in 2021, which is great news. And basically what these numbers mean is that when they started the fiscal year 2020, they had only two and a half million cases in backlog. It went up to 6.4 million, uh, which is triple, obviously. So the backlog has tripled. Um, now, how has USCIS tried to fix this, to address this? Well, what they did start doing, and that helped a lot, is reuse biometrics for 2.5 million people since March 2020. So if you did biometrics once, they now don't have to call you for biometrics again. They're trying, and you know, people, different advocacy groups have tried to talk to them, so they've tried other things. But generally, really, the only thing that they actually did to try to speed up these uh, backlogs is to reuse biometrics. Other than that, uh, I guess they were waiting for more money to come in, which is not in the media, but I think having, you know, like I go through a lot of immigration news every day so that I know what's going on. It looks like they also reported in a separate report that they got a lot more money because a lot more people applied this year a lot more people gave them money to use for operations so i think now that they're more comfortable financially they can bring some workers back who are working remotely even now and start to get um, you know this backlog on track but uh right now it's not clear where this is all going and how they will fix it specifically a lot more people are now upset by this because now it's years that this is happening right almost two years so I'm hopeful that maybe 2022 will be the year when we can finally resolve or at least reduce, make them smaller, these delays and backlogs. I hope this is helpful to you guys. I'm going to post a link to an article from boundless.com, which is like a you know really good immigration newsletter that follows USCIS and NVC and all their stuff and that has more details about all these statistics and all the charts so you could see for yourself how that happened on um, on your screen. Oh, you know what? I wanted to mention another piece of news. Um, National Visa Center, uh, which is run by the U.S. Department of State. So the Department of State is looking to increase in March all of the temporary non-immigrant filing fees. So if you have something that you were going to do uh, for a non-immigrant consular fee, all of those things will go up in March, so it's better to apply now rather than later so that you can pay for it now rather than later. I actually will. I will do a separate video about that and discuss the fees going up by each category. I hope you guys have a great week. Give us a call if you have any immigration questions. We have an entire team of attorneys and legal experts that do consultations with people. It's not just me. I do very few now because I'm really busy with the cases and 
doing um, you know these videos and writing articles and publishing things. So I hope you guys give us a chance and you're not afraid to talk to one of our experts because I personally prepare and train everyone who works for us. So we'll be so happy to hear from you and to help you finally become a US citizen, finally realize your American dream. Most of our team are immigrants ourselves. I'm an immigrant, I have an accent and I'm not ashamed. Stay healthy, bye-bye.